Hey, you guys are still here. Thank you very much for staying tuned to PT World. You're definitely watching World this morning. I happen to be Shahzad Hassan Khan. With me, I have the very learned, uh, in fact, very well spoken, the very amazing Ms. Haja Sati. And before heading out towards a short break, we were in conversation with a superstar of Pakistan televisions from back in the day as well. And obviously, it is our responsibility to take that wisdom from them, of course, of learn, course. and then kind of make sure that we construct right. on that a field or probably right. uh, prospects of our future right. that we never fall down. Inshallah, let me please in help us with that as well. Such is <laughs> the gentleman we have over here in the studios right. with us because most of the time I've been complaining, right. I've been whining about it, right. that you know we do not do a lot of research, we do not have a lot of research oh. facility. So this right. gentleman went to the Oregon State as well, you know, did something he wanted to do. He's a professor now as well. Alhamdulillah, he's a microbiologist, he's a scientist for us. Right. You know, and there's something very special to him, and that is that he just very recently won an award, and the competition was all about Project Vision 2050. Mm. It obviously entails all the SDGs as well. And how did he do that? What did he do? Is something which is beyond our comprehension. Right. So you know, right. rather than us, uh, right. you know, talking about it, it's better that we kind of introduce the, this gentleman, and then we kind of ask him whether what did he do, which right. is so phenomenal and amazing that he actually won an award for. Uh, himself and then the rest of Pakistan as well. So we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by the assistant professor of microbiology and he happens to be Dr. Wasim Sajjad sahab. Hello sir, assalamu alaikum, good morning, how are you? Wa alaikum sir, thank you so sir, much. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful right. to see people like you from Pakistan, you know, who are always making sure that they're going to contribute to the country's prosperity. But first right. things first, what was the project Vision 2050? What did you win and what was the sort of research you did because it has to do a lot with biosecurity, biodiversity. So please let us know. Okay, so the project was basically focusing on the microalgae based technology for the carbon dioxide removal. Okay. Because carbon dioxide is a pollutant which is invisible and that has a lot of impact on the climate change as well. So okay. as per the Paris Agreement, despite of the, to, to, to keep the temperature below 1.5 degrees centigrade, that's, it's continuously increasing. Right. So this technology is basically focusing on how to sequester the carbon dioxide. And right. the algae is the right candidate, I think, to sequester the carbon dioxide. So that the, the project was uh, solely based on the um, microalgae-based technology. And uh, it's like uh, microalgae-based technology is like a win-win because uh, the other sector like pharmaceutical, bi biotech sector and food sector can also grow with this. Alright, and in addition to that, obviously I would certainly want to kind of, uh, you know, share some statistics because, you know, 50 billion tons of CO2 is being produced every single year right. all over the world. You know, we are supposed to kind of take away, you know, this is what the new rules tells us that the 10 billion uh, tons of CO2 really needs to be reduced. Now, people I've seen that, you know, people have put in plants in Sweden, which they call the DCA, right. direct capture from air too, as well, of CO2, and then they store it underneath, which turns into the form of a rock. Why do you think that this is a cheaper and a way far better solution than the DCAs? You know, so let's have a fair comparison. Yeah, exactly. The, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on the Climate Change, mm -hmm. um, we need to sequester 10 billion of the carbon dioxide each year. And right. to achieve this data, we need to grow. The, the carbon market should need to grow at the growth rate of 55 percent, right. which is quite huge. So I believe that uh, the microalgae, some of the trees like other uh, plantation needs uh, sometimes the fertilizer, it's, it's a long term process, yep. it also need a farmland. So the algae based technology need just nitrate and phosphorus which is already available due to the, uh, due to the unplanned urbanization, due to the industrialization. And, uh, so it's a benefit, it's a plus plus. Yeah, it's a plus plus. And basically also the algae is something like, uh, as Ali mentioned, uh, the algae has the potential to be used as an neutrocytical antioxidant and other parameter as well. Now the, right. some of the poultry sectors are also trying to replace the, replace the poultry feed with the algae. Yeah, so that is like wow. the plus of that. So, so it's basically, you know, for the understanding of our audiences out there, so microalgae right. is basically a microorganism, probably a plant, yep. you know, to our, our, our eyes. And what it does is that it consumes all the CO2 in the atmosphere. And then what does it do with it? You know, does it grow by consuming CO2? That's what, our, that's what we are saying. Or do and you think that it's a smarter solution of a microorganism which will actually absorb CO2 from the environment? Yeah. And uh, then I also did the research and it said that it can be, you know, then uh, help to make the biofuel. Is, is that right? You know, as a layman, can you please explain what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. 
the algae is basically uh, very rightly said because right. um, the algae don't need like uh, because the new technologies are continuously emerging the carbon dioxide yes. whatever we set the target it's it's continuously emerging mm. at the carbon dioxide right. but there's a smart technology we can place the right technology at the right place and right. the carbon nitro nitrogen phosphorus already is present in the environment they're consuming because that's like a tiny creature and it's like a plant so why for to synthesis they sequester the carbon dioxide the biomass continuously grows mm. and there's other strategy like upwheeling and downwheeling as well yeah, yeah. so right. what happens in upwheeling and downwheeling and upwheeling and downwheeling we continuously mix up the algae to grow the biomass because the biomass uh, enlargement is um, directly proportional to the sequestration of the carbon dioxide right. and the more is the biomass the more is, is useful and so do you right. think that in days to come pakistan will see that you know we will have micro algae plants somewhere you know planted and then do you think that they are right. going to be environment friendly too because god forbid you know for all of those people who might have planted a lot of plants in islamabad you know th there's going to be a season when everybody is going to get pollen in islamabad because we never thought right. that hey you know what that can be repercussion and exactly right. the same way for example where we talked about the dcs as well the direct capture air, uh, uh, from the air mm -hmm. what happens is that you know if we are not going to move those plants onto renewable energy there's no point of having those plants to in the in the first place mm -hmm. because a lot of fossil fuel burning is happening over here in pakistan we do not we do have never moved on to the or renewable energy sources so how do you think that this is going to be the cheapest and the best way to reduce the carbon emissions mm -hmm. uh, this technology need like a capital expenditure that is one time cost so how some much time is it? I, I think it, it needs like some time life cycle analysis and assessment because right. uh, beco before mm -hmm. going to adopt any of the technology, uh, you 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 got to do some homework. True. So uh, for that, like so we believe you might have done that homework already, right? Or yeah. are you in conversation with some organizations? Do you want to share that? You know, you can go ahead, please. Uh, at this stage, I don't think so <laughs> because there's something like confidential between right. the parties. Yeah. yeah. I was just so later on, hope so. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to yeah. like uh, explore the technology more Wonderful. toward the policy maker and legislator that how. If you need investors, work. you know, we have Miss Hajja Sati. She's a great investor. I think I think she's out of your ideas. <laughs> please yeah. go ahead. So, so th this technology is basically. Um, uh, uh, you you didn't, don't need to worry about the pollen allergy yeah. or something and it's yeah. like sustainable as well mm -hmm. because using those biomass that is exactly like we are going to if, if you want to move toward the sustainable goals SDGs so we need to focus on these uh, uh, these resources as well like conversion of these resources for as to more useful resources that what the market is needed right now All right. okay yeah. so uh, the way I understand is that this technology helps to squeeze the carbon from carbon dioxide from the environment yeah. right yeah. And how does, uh, you know, the, the, the equation of capital comes into the play, you know, how is it a m money making enterprise because, you know, definitely when you go into the market, you know, the first thing that is important is, you know, how much money will a particular technology make, yeah. you know, no matter how much, you know, green uh, is it in its, you know, very construct. Because we're talking about a plant here, no? so, you right, know, it is right. so um, of course, if, uh, if, if hard for us to comprehend right. whether there's going to be any cost of it. If, if someone is investing into that, you know, how is it a uh, profit making institute? In, in that sense. Totally depends yeah. on how much CO2 you actually extract from the environment. That's that's a money making business in days to come. Yeah. Please go ahead. So uh, <laughs> that is the secret. <laughs> <laughs> So, like yeah, the, the the word is now right moving from the right. to the carbon credits, and that is the uh, emission versus the sequestration. Mm -hmm. So there are two types of the market. Some are going to to reduce the emission. That is right. not realistic. Right. Uh, but the other sector which is focusing on the sequestration using those carbon dioxide, and as you mentioned right. about that, how how it going to be sustainable? Who will be the end right. user? So there are a lot of organization, and now the EPI right. like Environmental Protection Agency and other organization right. love uh, now. Trying, uh, trying to uh, like uh, uh, make sure that make sure, yeah. yeah, they want to make sure like there is no toxic chemical are uh, present in the wastewater and right. the effluent because uh, due to urbanization and uh, in the bio and the fertilizer, a huge amount of fertilization, the nitrate and phosphorus that is present already in the water, so the the algal bloom the toxic blooms are also like growing continuously and that is going to going to affect your marine marine ecosystem right. like yes. the right. fish toxicity and all that yeah. so it's also one of the smart strategy to remove right. the nitrate and phosphate right. uh, so the company will obviously reach out the right people and the right companies that who want to adopt the technology. Is it happening anywhere in the world? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's happening right, right and, in and the developed countries. Such is an example which I will obviously right. share because, you know, your point of blue economy will get better too as well with that. We will talk oh. about fish. Yes, yes, obviously. yes exactly. You know, 
white meat. But now right. let me share an example. So imagine in Europe mm -hmm. they have these vending machines that you put in your plastic yeah. bottles okay. and they give you euros, right? And, okay. and it's great, you know, so right. for whatever amount of plastic bottles you yeah. have, you collect them, you go put, it, put them in those recycling machines and you get euros out of it. Wonderful. Now imagine same is the case with carbon credit. Yeah. So, you know, companies like Audi, Apple, Microsoft, all of these mm -hmm. companies, what they do is that they pay companies to come in, extract the CO2 from the environment, okay. and all of those digits are added to their credit, which they can then kind of go and, you know, while we check out, we can get the money back too as well. So right. I think it's beneficial, it's corporate social responsibility, and this will be a big market in days to come. But, you know, once, you know, obviously we will right. see witness uh, mushroom growth, the competition is going yeah. to bring down the prices too as well, which will eventually be helpful. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's talk about in this sphere, because when we talk about fossil fuel burning, you know, where 50% of the fossil fuel burning, we, we are doing that to generate electricity, probably 54%. Right. 24% of it uh, definitely comes from dams too as well, and then, you know, 7% from all renewable energy sources. Now, what I wanted to ask was that, you know, we as Pakistanis have been affected the most with climate change. Okay. And we have seen, you know, how, you know, we have had heat waves in Pakistan, mm -hmm. which we never thought of earlier too as well. Mm -hmm. So, don't you think that it will be beneficial to have that microalgae over here in Pakistan being planted and elsewhere as well? So, at least we get to breathe in some fresh air and that we do not in years to come witness the heat waves. And do you think that you will certainly have a talk with government officials to do so because that's the need of the hour. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, l last year I was just uh, um, curious to know about the, about the smog issue as well along the highways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read an article where Singapore's, um, uh, there is a startup who is working on the microalgae based technology and installation of the microalgae along the tunnels on the highways yeah. and as well like one of the effective strategies. So yes, it's going to create an impact and for the developing countries like Pakistan, yes. And so when will it happen? You know, so you know, because you are the guy we're going to talk about, uh, because you are the one who actually won an award. You are the one who came up with this idea. Hey, you know what? This is going to work best for the world, and we believe that it's going to be a cheaper solution as of now. So, what do you have to say? That you know, how long will it take for us to kind of adopt this system? Because earlier, right. when we talked about renewable energy sources, now people are talking about solar, where. 10 or 15 years ago, everybody was saying that, hey, you know what, we should rather install them. You know, we do not have an electric policy as of now, you know, which is in great shape as well, because when we talk about Mutarma Benazir Bhutto Sahiba, when she was the Prime Minister, she came up with the first policy as well, then obviously Mia Muhammad Nawaz Sharif Saab, and then later on we had those rental power projects in the People Party government too as well for, you know, for electricity generation. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of problems, but we do not have a comprehensive strategy or policy as of now, and this is... I'm quoting uh, Arsalan Saab as well, you know, because he's the one who's uh, the author of this mm -hmm. article. So how long will it take us to adopt that? Because initially we do not listen to people, mm -hmm. which we should have. <laughs> you yeah. know, we recently <laughs> feel, me and my father, that we should have moved on to solar. But yeah. how late are we on this? Uh, I think there's like a, like uh, bridging the academia, government and industry. Yes. So mm -hmm. right now the HEC and other organization is working on it to bridge uh, to, to reduce the gap between the government, between the academia and industry. So again, it's like the well and it's, uh, it's the power like to create an impact. So it, 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 it will take like most probably more six months or a year All as right. I assume because uh, reaching to the right people to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to brief them about the technology that is also one because whenever a technology or whenever industry want to pitch in the Pakistan so sometimes the regulatory affair are like bit uh, that, that may create a problem yeah. but you need to <laughs> like to reach out the people and brief them about the technology and also uh, to tell about the plus that what is the positive mm -hmm. impact of this technology. And, and then you know towards the end how does it grow? You know, this is something which I would certainly, well, I know that it might certainly be a secret because you certainly want to have a business uh, development process based on this very idea right. of yours and we want to wish you best of luck. But do you think it has all of those prerequisites over here in the country to grow it? Yeah, I think they just need like nitrogen, phosphate and carbon dioxide if you need, and it, need to grow it. Anyways. Yeah, and it's in our ear Yeah, that's in the ear. So you, so does uh, it grow naturally? Yeah, it's going naturally because wow. the technology um, uh, is, is not like a cost effective or it's cheap because you don't need to feed the algae from the outside. Yep. Everything is present there. Okay. The trick is like how to how to find those algae. That is the yeah, one of which the actually trick. absorbs. Yeah, you. sometime you need the uh, nitrogen and phosphate uh, phosphate ratio, the right ratio. Yeah. Some of the strain like are right. intolerant toward the nitrate, some are intolerant toward the phosphate. So the right one. Yeah. The right so match needs the right to be there. ingredients. Yeah, exactly. And you it's certainly like happen to be that gentleman who found the right ratio, right? Uh, supposed to be like, <laughs> whereas, uh, is, it, is, okay, for, yeah. is it a 60-40 
ratio? Is it a 70-30 ratio? Is it a 50-50 ratio? What is it? I took it on his side. I'm sorry, I was, yeah. just, I was just messing around as well. But <laughs> congratulations to you. You, right. and you certainly have spearheaded into a newer right. direction with right. coming up with such a technology which is going to be helpful for the rest of the world, not just right. Pakistan. Right. And then at the same time, it will help people have a better lifestyle, healthier lifestyle. <laughs> And we certainly want to congratulate you. And whenever you. your project or your dream is being fulfilled, we would certainly want you to have come back over here on the show and then talk about the ratios, all right? Yeah, <laughs> if, sure, you, sure. if you can. Well, for everybody who's out there, this is the kind of people we certainly want, you know, for our country because they think, they do their research, do their homework, they compete on international forums, and then being awarded by an international forum is something we all take pride in.